All right, so welcome to our week one of our feature matches for the Brothers War League. Uh, we have actually a couple of couple of newcomers, relative newcomers to our league here playing. Uh, so I'm Richard. I'm going to be watching from James' point of view, and unfortunately, as you see, he's <laughs> taking a mulligan to five here. Sadly, uh, on the other side is Kevin. So we're intending for Justin to watch his stream. Did he did he uh, get a stream up and running yet, or? Uh, he he has not uh, initiated his stream. Okay, so uh, I sent him a message, but if uh, s since I'm recording now, you can also uh, possibly send him a message to get that stream running, since uh, we would like to yep. see it from both players' point of view. Um, for now, you know, we, we might not be missing much, since uh, James is stuck on one land. Uh, he's got a land here. Uh, he can't, you know, he can only cast, uh, the only creature he can cast is a 1-2, and the other card he can cast is a Howling Mine. Uh so, looks like it might be a little bit of a rough go for him here. Hopefully we get Kevin's stream up. I know he was trying to stream before, but, uh, yeah. So, it looks like Kevin's going to put on the pressure here. Uh, you know, make this, make this mulligan to five even more, even worse here. I guess we could take the time to talk about this format. Yeah, so... Uh... This, this has been an interesting league so far. We have this mechanic that allows people to, uh, you know, what I call shop out of set, potentially. Uh, we actually get to see uh, a pack of Brothers War and then a, and then a random historic pack. So uh, the, the, the factor of being punished is not as high here because uh, we actually get to see the potential pack here. Um, how have you found the league so far? Well, I actually like this mechanic a lot. Uh, just because, like, sometimes you open, like, a uh, a pack that's not very good has a lot of just like the n non desirable cards of the set, and you could potentially just get uh like you know helped out by the other uh, option, which may not be the best, but could still be better. And you get to just always choose the better of the two options. Yeah. So and you mm -hmm. and you know like sometimes a historic pack it just offers a lot of value because like for example, I saw like someone open up get a pack of Eldraine. And there's like a True Love's Kiss in there. And for those who don't know, True Love's Kiss is Exile Target Artifact or Enchantment. Draw a card for two white white. And that seems pretty insane considering in this set of Brothers War, there are huge artifacts going around and kill a creature draw a card is amazing. So. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, so I, like, you know, I always wonder. I'm one that often will, uh, will go open other sets during League, uh, possibly to my downfall. But I always wonder, like, you know, how correct is it? And uh, we have some rough numbers so far. And it seems that uh, the people are taking the 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 Mishra pack, which is the randomly generated historic pack, uh, up under thirty percent of the time. So uh, I think it's kind of like I'm taking. I think it's default to I'm taking the Brothers War pack unless there's something extremely desirable in the pack I open. It's not so much of a fifty fifty could go either way type of type of uh, decision. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But what what I like about this is that. Uh, because most of the time when we choose to go out of out of set, it depends really on uh, the set's power level. Brothers, because like usually if a set's power level is low, you're more likely to take another set because that card might that set might have more powerful individual cards. And to me, in my personal opinion, I think the Brothers War set uh, kind of lacks in the kind of power we've been having recently. Yeah, there's a lot of synergy. There's a lot of synergy here. Um, so looking at uh... Looking at some of the options here, uh, the, the, the one thing I noticed that is that he's playing a black-red deck, but is not playing an excavation explosion that that he seems to have access to, which is uh, unusual. Were you were you able to to uh, send uh, Kevin a message to try and get? His I did send a message. I he has not responded back. Okay, well, it's uh, not the end of the world. So I did see some uh, some cards in his sideboard that normally you would play, such as excavation explosion. Uh, he has a Thran Spider, which is that rare. Um, so just a little bit about the players. It's actually kind of kind of exciting to see uh, two newcomers to our league. So uh, James is actually playing in his in his first league. So uh, very very nice of him to to offer to be in a feature match, uh, considering this is the first time he's been playing league. And Kevin's been with us since Dominary United, which is uh, two leagues ago. So uh, you know that's not to say they're they're new players to Magic. Uh, you know. <laughs> in our last main league, Dominary United, you know, a first-time leaguer here won it, but obviously 
uh, you know, he's an experienced player. So really, we, we do seem to attract a lot of experienced players who are looking for sort of a new challenge or a, a, a new a new take on unlimited magic here. So, okay, so Kevin's stream is finally finally up. Oh, that's great. I mean, you know, we missed the first match, but uh, there wasn't much to see. I mean, J James found a couple lands, but it was uh, it was it was too late for for it to matter. Uh, but looks like we're going to have a competitive game here, hopefully. Okay, so opening here with the Black Lady Forge, uh, it's kind of as good as it was back in the original Dominaria. It just makes any creature once you can equip it the biggest creature on the battlefield. Yeah, well. So in Dominaria, it was really good because, well, I mean, you had a lot of, you had a, a high density of legends. I hear your, your density of legends is lower, but you're going to have power stones to be able to, to equip it for seven a lot easier than you are, uh, than you were in Dominaria. So there's like, there's a downside, but then there's an upside. So uh, the card's still good. Um, yeah, so he's got this Howling Mine here. He's going to try and, try and draw some, he needs some more lands and uh, red ones too. Uh, so he's got... The kill zone acrobat here. So, what, what, what do you think of a card like Howling Mine? Would you uh, would you be happy uh, trying to make that work? Well, I, I know uh, you you have been a fan of trying to find uh, things that could tap Howling Mine at will. <laughs> yeah, there's, but, there's uh, not too many, but but, but yes, yeah, so I think Howling Mine typically uh, goes in a very specific deck. Where if your deck is focused around having like you know more efficient plays and running out of cards quicker you know you could use the extra draw and like kind of just like get your deploy all your things faster than your opponent yeah and, but then, uh, of note he has three ways to sacrifice it in his hand so uh if it ever stops stops becoming advantageous for him to for him to have it in play uh you yeah, know he's got the option of doing that all right so he's stealing the black blade but does he have a way to sacrifice the Black Blade? Oh, there's the Kill Zone Acrobat can sacrifice it. All right, so uh, cool little play there. Yeah, uh, Kill Zone Acrobat into Sibling Rivalry has been a noticeable uh, combo. Yeah, Kill Zone Acrobat was a card that didn't really have my attention, and it's uh, it still doesn't. It's still not looking amazing, but uh, but uh, we <laughs> we saw it be effective there. So, uh, like I was saying, he has three ways in his hand to potentially sacrifice this Howling Mine if he feels that uh, it's giving his opponent too much of an advantage. Uh, my, my personal desire would be to put it in a deck with uh, multiple copies of the one-drop uh, Stalwart that, where you can tap it to make mana. You could tap that and an artifact to, to make mana. That would be my personal goal. Uh, all right, so uh, he's got an Axe Guard Cavalry here, which can give creatures haste on demand, so that's... Uh, include from call time it's uh definitely not an effect you would find in this set uh, especially since like you know giving a uh repeatable big creatures haste is quite powerful yeah there's, and the other card yeah, that gives haste is a bitter reunion yeah, card there's the bitter from... reunion that uh that can do that there's also swift foot boots uh that exists in the uh in the retro artifacts slot so that is a card that uh that, that can surprise some people um so I, I'm I, my the, my theory is that in week in week one we're going to see more consistent decks than maybe we've really ever seen before in league just because of the density of colorless cards making mana bases uh, less punishing. So what do you think about that? I mean, if you think about it, more more of the colorless cards are defined to be uh, higher drops, so they're not really because like they, they are prototype, right? Like. Uh, but you can run them for their just colorless value. Exactly. I'm just saying that you you have a lot more late you have a lot more focus on the late game than you will have on the early game because you can't cast. Uh, so if you choose use the prototype cards for their lesser mana cost, if you put them in like an off color deck. Yeah, well, yeah, the that's true. But I think what I was what, what I was trying to say is that um, it lets you it lets you just have higher card quality in your deck in week one. Right, because normally it's like either you're a three color mess of like you know straight three colors, or you're you know you're down to two colors, but you're playing a lot of bad cards. But I think here we actually get sort of the best of both worlds because we get these colorless cards that we could throw in, and uh, you know it means that your your card quality across the board is probably going to be higher, whether you're two colors or more. Um, you know, somebody like a conservative player like myself, I could just say, well, I could have a two color deck right away with all these up colorless cards, and then. Somebody who's a bit more on the 
you know, what I would call greedy side, wants to play three or four colors, they can say, well, I can just throw a bunch of colorless cards in to mitigate, you know, potential color issues. And, uh, you know, I'll be able to play a bunch of these cards uh, and then I can get my color set up. So, yeah. yeah you could definitely just play a creature, uh, any artifacts, just to, you know, fill in the slots of your deck. Yeah, I think we could definitely, I think people are definitely playing unearthed creatures with uh, maybe like, you know, the, the unearth cost itself is a splash because you can always cast the, the front side. So, uh, you know, on, onto this game that uh, that we're looking at. What do we see here? Uh, what's what's Kevin holding here? He's holding a bunch of just, uh, well, creatures, and he has, like, removal and obliterating bolt and a protection spell in Lauren's Escape. But he has he's kind of scuffed on white mana, which is what most of his creatures mm. need. Okay, well, so I'm guessing Ur Ur uh, Mishra here might, might, might get bolted. But it will cost oh, yeah. him a permanent. I, I, I can see him just sacrificing a land here. He might just sack a mountain. He doesn't need uh, that amount of uh, red sources at the moment. Yeah, this Asgard Cavalry is like rather threatening here. Yeah, so James yeah. in his hand, he still has a Thraxodemon, a Penrigan Strongbull, and he has the Sardian Cliff Stomper, which is that uncommon that uh, cares about how many mountains you have. Uh, that cycle in this format, I think, I mean, I know what they were going for. There's an, it's an artifact set. You have a lot more options than just the monocolor in a limited format. And th those cards could be payoffs. But uh, some are definitely better than others. Yeah, I've liked uh, the white one. The others, I haven't played very much. Yeah. To, so I was I, I tried out, like, uh, uh, looked into it quite a bit. And, like, you know... The, I like the blue one quite a lot, especially if you could like get a lot of islands. Like discarding two is not such a big deal when you're drawing like six. Yeah, like I, I was mentioning to you before, I currently have a draft deck where I have a, I'm playing eleven islands uh, with two of those. So, um, so looks like James is going to be able to defend himself against small creatures, but uh, if bigger stuff comes down with haste, it could be a little bit of trouble. Um, so he does have a moment of defiance here, which is what he's uh, what he's gonna want to use to try and get rid of this cavalry, which is you know giving him a bit of a headache. So here comes the trick. You know, I like James's position here a lot actually because uh, Kevin is not presenting a lot of pressure, and James has just kind of found himself an engine with like the Thraxodemon and the uh, I I cannot quite remember. Oh, the clay uh, the yes. the returning monster. Yeah, so this is like a six mana draw card loop that you can do, but you can also like chump block every second turn with it. Uh, you know, you have options of when to to use the mana. You don't need to use it all at once, but uh, basically, for every six mana you spend, you get a card, and the the revenant comes back. In limited, uh, any engine is quite good when the board gets uh, you know clogged up and there's no action moving forward. You just right. gotta find it. Well, the locust is nice here to get rid of that uh, unearth card. I think it was the the onulet. I get your bit of value. Yep. Yeah. Th this card reminds me just of like you know scavenging harpy from Theros Beyond Death. It had yeah. its uses. It's it's almost the exact same card. It has an extra line that uh, you make them lose a life if it was a creature. And I think that the harpy gained you a life. I believe. Um. I think it in that situation, just, I think it might have just been uh, just just exile the card, but uh, okay. it doesn't really matter here. So, uh, what what are Kevin's options here again? Okay, Siege Veteran, that's a good one. What yeah, that card's got? gonna. Yeah, so he has a bunch of cards he cannot cast. Okay, is that based on uh, their mana cost? Well, is too I, high, I, I, as as current, yeah, he has two four drops and a five drop, and he does have Sigrid, God favored, which he's now able to cast. Well, that's that's an interesting one. He could even cast it uh, with his Chromatic Star if he needs to, to disrupt yeah. combat here. So here's an Unleash uh, Shell off the top, which is going to go after that Siege Veteran. Yeah, it's a very very good top deck. Yeah, that Siege Veteran is uh, you know almost always a must kill. Very reminiscent oh, all... of the the Luminarch Aspirant. And we all know how much of a menace that was in limited and in standard. Well, it was it was so good in, in constructed they had to they had to make it worse with alchemy. Ooh, he's drawn a worm coil engine here. Does uh, does Kevin have a 
Does Karen have uh, anything resembling a clean answer to that? Uh, well, he does have the Sigrid. Okay, yeah, so that can get it off the board until Sigrid leaves. All right. But then again, there's the Strongbull to, you know, sack it in response. Yeah, Str- Strongbull has been a, been a big performer here in this form. I mean, he doesn't have any artifacts in play now, but uh, once you get going with artifacts, uh, that thing represents, you know, every sack represents two damage potentially when it's attacking. Right, yep. so, here's, so here's a flyer here. I think just realizing he has to protect himself from the 2-1. He has an 8 life. It You know, it's not very far from death. Yeah, so he's actually set it up that he, with, with the land draw here, he can actually sack the Worm Coil to his uh, Thraxodemon to draw a card. So uh, Yeah, it's very good. He set himself up here. Well, it looks like he's just going to main phase, put it back in his hand. That's, uh, you know, I, I think there there's there's a pretty good reason to uh, to leave your mana open. Because you, you, you can always bring him back to your hand at the end of turn anyway, the end of the opponent's turn. So, uh, oh, he just got he got pretty punished because he top decked Divine Gambit. Well, at least he gets to put a card into play from his hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not a big fan of Divine Gambit, but I know players that are that are better than me have uh, have have told me time and again that it's uh, a completely fine card. I not think it's fine. But... In this set, where there are a lot of huge artifacts, less good because, you know, you can just, like, exile a problematic rare and then some, then suddenly there's a 10-10 trample reach in your face. Yeah, I think in Kaldheim it was, like, very, very bad. In Strixhaven it was admittedly a little bit better because most of the expensive cards were uh, instants and sorceries. And you yes. didn't usually have just some big, dumb permanent lying around in your hand. But, uh, yeah, it's not a card I've ever I've ever really liked. But, uh, yeah, you know, the, leaving open mana for Thraxodemon is, is usually pretty pretty advisable, I would say. All right, he's got an Arcane Proxy here, which is going to be able to cast something from his graveyard, uh, a spell from his graveyard. The, the, I mean, I see Unleash Shell there, uh, visible, so I don't know off, offhand what all the other ones are, but I know he cast Power Stone Fracture this game. Uh, did he? I think he cast Sibling Rivalry this game, too, so... That yes, could be something but to watch out for. So he has access with, to that. Yes, but in order to make use of a sack outlet, he would need to. Uh, yeah, so he's looking at his graveyard now. Mana. Like I said, there's moment of defiance, sibling rivalry. There's overwhelming remorse to just exile something and unleash shell. Uh, yeah, so all the all the ones that I said plus a couple others. Also yeah, that. when I took a, a brief look at uh, James's pool, it looked very high quality. Yeah. I he had mean, a, he had good rares, good removal. Yeah, like I said before, I did notice uh, at least one or two cards in his sideboard that were uh, ominous by their uh, <clears throat> by their absence from the deck. But uh, you know, he's uh, <laughs> we're seeing we're seeing the power of you know some of his mythics. All right, so this Kayla's reconstruction, I think it's called, uh, not a card I've seen cast yet, and. Uh, I think he spent six mana to get two creatures into play, so kind of a kind of a collected company, but a couple more mana here. Yeah, uh, it's different. Yeah, I know. It's, I know it's different, but it, it it behaved like a like a collected company in this. Uh, in this yes, but, but, for... but but I know you can put at any amount that you find within those top X. No, it's put X amount that you find in the top seven. Oh, in the top seven. Okay, so he looked at the top seven and he got. Uh, so he got two, and he could yes. have got, and he could have got three. Yes, potentially. All right, so he's casting the arcane proxy now, deciding what to do about all this. Uh, so he he can't cast uh, he can't cast something bigger than four power, uh, four mana. So he can't cast the overwhelming remorse or the unleashed shell, uh, but he can cast sibling rivalry or power stone fracture. I like sibling rivalry, fracture. especially with the fracture demon. Yes. Yeah. So sibling rivalry. Let's see what he's gonna gonna grab here. All right, so it's just gonna be the the flyer that's threatening him here. He can get back to attacking in the air, and uh, you know, with one more air attack, uh, so he gets him down to four, but he, he gets him down to one, and then he yeah, so he's gonna sack now to 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 win this game because he can sack with the strong bull. So yeah, that was the play to win the game. All right. Yeah, so Arcane Proxy, a uh, very, very powerful card here. 
just casting a spell for free from your graveyard. Uh, that turned the game and, uh, you know, got him a lot of damage that uh, his opponent was not suspecting. So he's not going to bother with sideboarding here. He's happy with his deck. Any uh, any uh, sideboard options you see for uh, Kevin here? Okay, now that I get a better view of his sideboard, it just looks like straight three, straight three color. Yeah, I was thinking that based on what we saw that game. It looked like blue was closer to the potential splash, but... Uh, yeah, he is a bit lighter on the blue, but he's 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 like white red with like I, sort of splashing blue in between playing the third color and splashing it. Okay. Uh, all right, so not a very good hand here for James. I don't know if he wants to keep it. He's got a howling mind, a whirling strike, which is a combat trick, and the overwhelming remorse, and and four lands, but. Uh, Perhaps after seeing his opponent Mulligan, he's decided to keep it. But this Howling Mine could could help Kevin get out of the Mulligan. Uh, you know, there's always the danger of with uh, the Howling Mine. A Surge Engine here. That's uh, that's a premium card. Once, the one uh, thing about Howling Mine is that blue mana, he gets to start attacking with that. But yeah, the one thing about Howling Mine is that your opponent gets to draw the extra card first, yeah. and you know that's usually the bad thing about like helping opponent because they get to use the card first. Yeah, I mean, there could be an argument that just, like, in week one, when all the decks are a little janky, just just, just finding more cards is better. Uh, and if he's confident that maybe his cards are going to be better than his opponent's on average, he could do that. Uh, he could also sack it to, to Ashnod here to make a power stone. <laughs> oh, Ashnod gets second artifact. I thought it was only creatures. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, I thought it was. Most of the things in the set say sacrifice artifacts or creatures, but... Uh, this is one that doesn't, so... Yeah. Ashnod's uh, not an artifact hater. I think I would have been excited uh, if it if it would. I'd just throw in my Howling Mind and make a Power Stone. But uh, uh, his hand is very weak. Despite the fact that he's been drawing, that the, the Howling Mind came down, He's uh, he's not been uh, drawing drawing relevant cards here. Just, just lands. Uh, he's yeah, got so... An, yeah, he's got an Arcane Proxy now, which is of no help. He's got a Whirling Strike, uh, which is of no help. And he's got an Overwhelming Remorse, which he can cast next turn uh, on this Surge Engine to uh, stop taking damage from it. But I've already got to got him to seven. Uh, this card is uh, is a monster on turn two. Uh, it might not work. He's just holding up a whole bunch of uh, uh, protection for the Surge Engine. Okay, so what does he, what does he have? He, he has like the Stainful Stroke, Defabricate. Lauren's escape, wings of the cosmos for any burn spell. Yeah, like Lauren's he, escape he is, uh, is hexproof, right? Yes, yeah, indestructible hexproof and scry okay. one. So it looks like unless uh, unless we see something uh, miraculous occur, it looks like the surge engine is going to just single handedly win this game backed with a protection spell. He's drawn a worm call engine, but again, I think it's just uh, yeah, he's, he has to tap out here to do this. It's not going to work. Uh, I guess to leave Ashnod back, so to, to, to chump lock. Well, not chump lock, I guess it would trade. Yeah, and if Kevin has any removal or pump spell or basically anything, he just uh, he can win on the spot here, potentially. Oh, yeah, he just has he just lethal by winging his surge engine and attacks all. Offering up the surge engine. And, oh, can the surge yeah. engine not be blocked? It can't be blocked. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that, okay. That, that's why that card's completely absurd. So okay. Uh, so the first ability is lose defender, and the second ability is if it doesn't have defender, it becomes a five four and can't be blocked. Yeah, a bit of a slow hand there for James. Okay. And, uh, didn't didn't quite find when he needed there, and when he got his removal, unfortunately, the protection spell kept that surge engine. So uh, you see the power of that card, and uh, congratulations to Kevin on his win there, and uh, we'll be back for our next match a little bit later.